Hey guys, I just wanted to shift gears on our YouTube channel for a little bit. I always enjoy reading weightlifting literature, whether it's books, uh, online articles, or some older magazines or He-Man books, as John would say. And today I wanted to touch a little bit on an article that I was reading back from the January 1970 issue of the Strength and Health magazine. And these were put out by Bob Hoffman. Um, he owned York Barbell Club, and he is often considered the father of American weightlifting for um, how he helped cultivate the sport in this country. And the article I wanted to talk about is the ABCs of Weightlifting by Tommy Kono. And the ABCs of Weightlifting, um, they're a little in installment series of articles, just Kono distributing facets of knowledge uh, in regards to technique involved in performing the the Olympic lifts and Tommy Kono he's a uh, oh gosh uh, his name speaks for itself but he was a two-time Olympic champion won the world championships set plenty of world records and he was actually Mr. Universe uh, a handful of times back when weightlifting and Mr. Universe were held in conjunction with one another um, but in this particular installment of the ABCs of weightlifting, he focuses on the theory of acceleration is applied to the pull. And it's split up into two sections. The first section talks a, a little bit on how and when force is applied in the pull. And the first example he gives is the way not to do it, and that is, if you look in this diagram right here, uh, you can see that this is a bar starting on the floor and this is the bar as it progresses uh, to the hips during the pull and right off the floor you have a, a large force right in the middle pulling the bar up and then you have these smaller forces uh, assisting the bar off the floor but then as you see that the line gets higher and higher less of these forces are accompanying this large thicker line in the middle and this is to illustrate um, yanking the bar off of the floor so a lot of the time, and I honestly do this when cleans get really heavy, a lot of the time I'll think to myself, oh, if, if, if I, I have any chance of getting this bar off the floor, I have to rip it off the floor as fast as I can. It's a, a cue that you hear plenty, rip it, just yank it. But So this makes getting the bar off the floor easier, yes, but once the bar approaches the hips, there are less forces being applied to the bar, and this is in the... Um, this is a part of the lift where you would actually want the most force applied to the bar. So it makes getting getting under the bar a lot harder. And this uh, line to the side illustrates building up the force, building up the acceleration on the bar. Uh, um, and then as you can see, when, once the bar gets close to the height of the pull at the top, you have multiple forces aiding the bar and the bar is actually accelerating at the top of the pole and this will enable you to facilitate getting under and actually pulling under more forcefully. If you're you're pulling up at the top and, and you're able to impart a lot of force on the bar at the top of the pole, you'll be able to impart much more force to pull yourself under. And the second point that he makes in this article and is really the the bigger takeaway from this article I believe with how much more he wrote about it is banging the bar off of the hips. Now, when at the time that this article was uh, was written, um, it was it had only been a few years since the bar was actually allowed to graze or brush the thighs. That's the, the reason the clean initially had its name is that that you were not allowed to contact the bar in any way from the floor to when it arrived at the shoulders. Um, but it was back in the in the I, I believe the late fifties or early sixties that the bar was actually allowed allowed to uh, to graze or brush the thighs and and as a consequence of that once the rule was changed lifters would deliberately bang the bar into their hips and as Kono says they believed that it would help them lift heavier weights and he actually knew of a weightlifter <laughs> that wore a, a foam rubber pad on their lower abdomen um, to help bang the bar off the off of their uh, their hips or, or their pubic bone without it bruising too much, I think there's actually a pair of shorts that are that are out right now that are pretty much the exact same thing. That Kono wrote about it back in the '70s, but um, but really Kono um he just goes on to say that this will actually slow the bar down and it will do 
distort the bar and move it off of the correct bar path. And he used this diagram right here to, to give a little um, comparison on what would happen if the bar is banging off of the hips. Right here you can see this car heading towards the guardrail and it smacks into the guardrail and comes off. When, when a car would smack off of a guardrail, it's going to slow down as it bounces off and, and changes direction. Whereas if the car is heading towards the guardrail and it, 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 it kind of, um, it kind of just, just manages to turn and, and miss this guardrail, it, it can actually come off and, and accelerate better than if it were to strike a guardrail. A strike or a sharp turn sl uh, slows down the bar rather than accelerate it. That's um, the conclusion that Kono comes to, to state. And, and he, he ends the article with, to strike the bar with your thighs is a definite detriment to your quest for an accelerated pull. And so I would say this is pretty relevant today. Um, John would always say, and I, gosh, I've been in his gym for uh, just about every day for the, the past seven years, but he would always say, you should not try to put impetus on the bar. By, by banging the bar into your hips. It brushes and, and it's just in, incidental on, um, on standing up and extending with a bar. When I talked to Niku Vlad, um, the, the um, heaviest man to have ever snatched double body weight, he did 200 and a half kilos, weighing 100 kilos. When I asked him how he would describe the way that the bar contacts the hips, he put his hands up side by side and just said, this is the bar, it's just a touch. It just touches and brushes past. It should not pop away. He just, he just brushes up. And I honestly love, like I, if uh, anyone has been around me and seen me pretend to coach, I always am pretty animated with my hands, but I think it's a good little example and a good little way to, um, uh, to kind of physically feel what should happen. It's just slightly grazing and brushing up rather than popping away. Well, I hope that you guys find that useful. And yeah, if you have any suggestions or want me to explore a little bit more into these Strength and Health magazines, thanks to John, I have access to every single issue uh, since I think 1929 was when the first issue came out. So yeah, just let me know. And please subscribe to our channel or I will cry myself to sleep. So yeah, thanks.